All right, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the technological ingenuity I had to come up with to film this video. <laughs> I, I have the PowerPoint from my laptop HDMI cord, right? That's easy. But then I had to figure out how I was going to do the mic because I don't have a wireless mic. And it would, I didn't want to use my big mic. I wanted to be hands free. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have this little, <laughs> this little guy. So I hooked him up to my phone and <laughs> I'm just going to use a barrette to clip it to my sweater. And I am going to test it to make sure that like it's not too rustly in the fabric. And then um, I don't have a clicker, right, to like keep it going. So I, but I do have a wireless mouse. If this works, I'm going to be so pleased with myself. Here we go, ladies and gents. Hello, friends. Why did I look in? I looked into my ring light instead of in the camera when I said that, LOL. This is obviously quite a different setup. I had a much more casual video where I talked about what I'm gonna be talking about to you today. Um, I filmed it in the beginning of December and I finally started editing it this last week. And as I like got to the end of the video, I said to myself, I don't think I actually said what I like the point like I gave you all this lead up lead up lead up information and then I never actually said the point and so we're trying again with great visual aid <laughs> because I think it'll help me keep my focus and like keep straight with what I'm trying to tell you because there are a lot of details interconnected and I don't want to mess this up because I'm very excited about it. This is time for me to teach. I never get to teach. Are you kidding me? Let's teach today. Today we're talking, it's backwards in the camera. <laughs> today we're talking about the Kentucky plot, which is God's sovereignty as the master plotter and the Hello. And the reason for Kentucky, AKA the purpose of 2023 for me. Okay. This is huge. I had when, when Kentucky went so bad, which by the way, if you have not seen that video, I will link it here. You're going to want to know what went down. If you don't know what went down in order to understand why this is so important and so exciting for me. Um, Everyone was like, in time, hopefully God will reveal to you the purpose of this. But even if he doesn't, just know this is something that can be used for good by God. Like nothing is wasted in God's hands, right? Y'all, two months after that disaster, God was like, hey, Cass, let me just tell you. This is, this is what happened. This is why it happened. It's what needed to be done. And I was just like, whoa, that is crazy. So I'm going to explain my revelation because I think it's very exciting. <clears throat> this is going to be me for the next 20 minutes or however long this video is. Okay. I'm a writer. This is about God being the master plotter. So in order to understand like why it works so good, why it makes so much sense, the absolute beauty of the moment, we need to understand the hero's journey. So if you're a writer, hi, this is a free writing plotting session with Cassandra Grace. Um, <laughs> if you don't care about writing, stay here because I, it, it all loops, it all, it's all connected, okay? Just hang with me. So the hero's journey is a very classic way of, um, of structuring stories. It's been around for a very, very, very long time. Almost every big movie franchise follows the hero's journey. So it starts out in the ordinary world. Nothing exciting is going on, it's just ordinary life. And then there's this call to adventure. Now, the hero is called, right, they're the chosen one. And then they usually refuse the initial call. But something forces them 
usually the meeting of the mentor, forces them to cross the threshold from the ordinary world into the adventure. In the adventure, they face challenges and temptations, which leads to the abyss or the death moment. This is the really, really bad situation before we get the rising action of the climax. All right, so we have the abyss. We then rise into transformation. The hero becomes a different person than they were at the beginning of the story. And then they have atonement and return home. So this, guys, is exactly what happened to me in 2023. Are you joking? Let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> There is one slight change and that's totally okay. Authors have the ability to take this structure and shift it around a little bit, right? So God said, you're not gonna meet your mentor till after the abyss moment, okay? But don't worry, it's all in there. It's just, it's just moved slightly over. So let's walk you through my hero's, <laughs> my hero's journey. All right, The Ordinary World Was My Life in Ohio, start of 2023. In January, I was working a regular nine to five and I was bored. Life was great, but man, <laughs> was I bored. I, I knew I needed a new job. I was like, there's just gotta be more for me than hitting copy and paste for eight hours every day, five days a week. Like I just can't, I'm not a copy and paste office secretarial administrative work girly that's not me that's all i've done since i graduated college but i hate it i'm sorry that's the way god made me okay so in my looking for a new job um i was really really pursuing this one aspect of ministry and i was like god should i do it should i not do it i really want to do it but i don't want to do it unless you say yes and he never said yes. Instead, he said, I called you to write. <laughs> and I said, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, what do you want me to do now though? Like, I need a job to pay the bills. So like, yeah, I'll write in my free time, whatever. But what about my career, God? What about my profession? I don't care about my calling what what job should i get god and um he didn't quite answer that he just said i called you to write and i ran out of patience so guess what i moved to kentucky this is the bad moment for me right i faced challenges and temptations and boy was that abysmal it was not good in kentucky all right spiritually emotionally physically i actually was in a lot of physical pain in kentucky as well um so yeah it was it was bad time it was a bad time once i got out of kentucky and i came to illinois again i started going to a new church and um in this church i went to a young adults night ministry group community group that's what it's called and this girl invited me to her small group and I said, okay, I'll think about it. And I didn't go the next week. And then I went to the adults community group again. And this other girl was like, Hey, you should come to my small group. And I was like, Oh, well, this other girl invited me to hers. And she was like, Hey, we're in the same small group. And I said, okay, well, if two people have invited me to the same small group, I should probably go to that small group. And boy, am I glad that I did. <laughs> Because there, I met Kristen. Kristen is an amazing woman. Literally the type of, I mean, I don't know her that well, but I'm gonna say this anyway. Literally the type of woman I aspire to be, okay? She is a legit professional writer and artist. Stop it, stop it. Are you kidding me? What are the freaking odds that the small group leader I just so happen to get invited to her small group. And she's like, oh, guess what? I'm who you wanna be in 30 years. Good to meet you. 
get out of town. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen unless we have a sovereign God who's the master plotter in control of all things, right? This is crazy. I meet Kristen. I'm like, hey, could we have a one-on-one -on -one meeting sometime so I can tell you my story? And just because my life has been in shambles <laughs> for the past couple of months. This, when, when did we talk? November. It was right before Thanksgiving that this happened. Okay, so I meet, I meet Kristen and we're talking and, and I'm telling her, you know, God said I called you to write and I was like, whatever. And I moved to Kentucky and it was really terrible and I ruined my relationship with God and now I don't know what to do. And she was like, okay, so let me get this straight. You're living at your parents' house, so you don't pay rent, you don't really pay for groceries, and you're working part-time. And I said, yes, isn't that embarrassing? And she said, no, God has given you this opportunity so that you have time to actually write. And I said, okay, I see what you're saying, but I went to this writing conference in t September of 2022. And it crushed me. Uh, I was really excited for it. I thought it was gonna be great. And instead I was so overwhelmed and so like, I cannot do this, that I just stopped writing. And um, God telling me, hey, I called you to write was definitely him telling me, why are you giving up on this? This is what I've placed on your heart since you were in second grade. Like, you know, this is what I called you to do. Why aren't you doing it? And um, I was just like, oh, I'm scared and I'm not good enough and blah, blah, blah. And I feel bad about myself and gross, right? And Kristen said something that totally changed my mindset completely. Like it just was a light bulb moment for me. She said, if God called you to be a doctor, you know, like while you're searching for this new job that I, you know, my moment in January, I'm searching for a new job. She said, if God said in that moment, hey, I want you to be a doctor, you would have enrolled into school and said, it is going to take me at least eight years to become a doctor and be who God wants me to be so I can be successful in that profession and be good at what God has called me to do. And you would be fine with that. But because it's writing and that's a talent, you think, oh, I have to be good at this thing right here, right now. And the fact that I'm good, but not great enough to be published is like devastating news to you. When in fact, you just need to put in your eight years to get good at the craft, to learn the craft, and then be who God wants you to be. And I'm like, stop, that makes so much sense. <laughs> that makes so much sense. So immediately, I go home, I go to like half price books, I'm <laughs> buying all these books on plotting and crafting a story and how do you pace well because I've never successfully written a full length novel. It's always been novellas. I think the longest story I've written is 35,000 words and a traditional YA fantasy novel is 80,000. So like I, I'm way under. So I was like, okay, I'm writing this new book and I want it to be, I want it to be the right word count. I want to plot it well. I want to pace it well. I want to learn the craft so I can get good at the thing God's called me to do. So in eight years time, I can be successful, right? That's my transformation moment. Going from like, oh, woe is me. Life is so hard. I can't do what God's called me to do to being like, no, bro, I'm going to freaking do it. I'm going to, I'm going to be who God called me to be. And I'm going to fix my relationship with God because God didn't do anything wrong. I did. Right? So that leads me then to writing again as my atonement and, and returning home. This also, you know, reading the Bible, actually praying, caring about the fact that God loves me is also wrapped up in that. But you know, Guys, God took the entire year of 2023 to walk me through this. He saw me here in the ordinary world and he was like, this girl needs a life transformation and it's only going to happen if we hit all this series of ups and downs, mostly downs, so we can go up here and get her back on track to where she's supposed to be. Let me show you another way, okay? <laughs> 
All right, so when you have a story, this is the general trajectory of a story. You have your inciting incident, this starts the story, and everything goes downhill from there. It's just problem after problem after problem, and usually there's little, like, little wins, you know, so you have hope, and it's not just a downer of a book, but it, the general trajectory is down until you reach this moment called the black moment. It's right before the climax, and it is the moment where everything is awful, and you think you're going to lose. This is me in Kentucky. The black moment is so important to writing a story because it is, it is the transformative moment. It what, it's what makes the hero say, hey, what I'm doing isn't working and I need to try something else. So it really took me, can we be dramatic? Can we say losing everything? It took me losing everything to go, hey, remember when God called me to write? Like I should do that maybe again maybe so then you have your transformation and your climactic resolution another way that people will identify this midpoint moment is by saying what is the lie that the character believes in the beginning of the story in the ordinary world they have a lie that they are acting out of it's it's how they interact with the world based on a lie. They have to hit this black moment to realize that their lie is a lie and then to say, okay, well, if that's a lie, what is the truth then that I have to accept? Guys, this is what I went through. This was my 2023. Get out of here. I'm so happy. And I, <laughs> and I only realized like God did this throughout the entire year in November, end of November. It was like right around Thanksgiving. So it was only when I was like at this moment that I realized, oh my gosh, all of this happened too. All of that to say, I went into Christian education because I am so passionate about literature and I am so passionate about God most of the time, unless I live in Kentucky, then I don't care about him at all. But um, <laughs> majority of, the, of my life, um, I, I am very passionate about God. And so um, studying the Bible is the greatest combination of those two things because it's like real life, it's history, right? but it's also so literarily structured and like God did it all. But getting to see it play out in my life in such a way, astounding. I, this, was the, this was the best thing God's done in my life. This was very exciting for me. You know, if you are in, if you're in a rough spot right now, just be like, this is my black moment. Be like, this is my abyss, right? I'm in the abyss right now. But guess what? A transformation is coming. Transformation's gonna come. So, lesson, lesson of the time. God knows what he's doing, okay? Even when we quite literally refuse the call and do our own thing, God's like, don't worry, I'll work it out. He does all things for the good of those who love him. That's the lesson of the day. So I hope... I hope you're on fire because boy, am I on fire. Um, speaking about writing, I am taking that more seriously. Uh, if you want like writing and bookish content, uh, follow me on Instagram at Cassandra's Pocket. I'm doing a lot more consistent writing and book stuff <laughs> on there. You can also sign up for my bi-monthly newsletter. It comes out the 1st and the 15th. I only just started this newsletter February 1st. So you're not behind at all. When you sign up for the newsletter, you get a little email with the entire plot, not the entire plot, with the summary of the plot <laughs> of my current work in progress. And um, the 15th, I'm gonna start character bios in, in that newsletter. You also get updates first on new projects and stuff, like my new song. My new song comes out um, February 14th. It's called Even When. It's a happy song, but it is still for people who are sad, but it's like a happier message. It's not a lament. It's a love song from God to us about loving us even when we're broken. So I'm really excited about that. It's very timely considering my year. A couple days before, either like the 12th or 13th, 
Um, I will be posting a video about why I think that song is so timely and why I've decided to release it now because originally I was going to wait to release it. Anyway, all those deets will be in my next video. So I hope you're excited. I'm excited. Wow, the energy in this, I should, maybe I just need to stand up when I film. Huh, maybe I do just need to stand. I don't know, uh, the energy in this video was unmatched. <laughs> and I really do think it is just cause like, wow, I, I love God again. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> I, I hate crying on camera. It just feels very like <laughs> fake and clickbaity to me. But honestly, like, if you <laughs> let me just plug all my stuff. If you listen to the last episode we released of More Than Sparrows, um, I'll link it in the description box. But I talk about how. <laughs> Um, how I was doing this like listening prayer thing and God said, I love you. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> and just like how painful and awful that was um, to have that realization. But I was like, just because I've had the realization that I don't care that God loves me and I know that's bad doesn't mean I've <laughs> had the transformation moment. <sighs> and so now to be like, wow, I actually do care and I actually do love God again. <laughs> it's really exciting the dog's here because I'm crying. Anyway, wow, I did not think this video was gonna end like that. Um, yeah, anyway, so I have a lot of exciting stuff going on in my life. <laughs> That's all I have for you today. Um, remember you are loved. <laughs> Bye.